Welcome back. Now let's turn our attention to the pumps with our weekly energy update with Dan McTeague, president of Canadians for Affordable Energy. Well, thank you for that, Nima. Uh, exciting week ahead as we're drawing to a close, not only summer, but the end of August. And normally at this time of year, we see prices uh, tapering off a little bit in advance of reduced demand. Uh, summer driving is coming uh, to an end. In a couple of weeks, we shift from winter, rather from summer to cheaper to make winter gasoline. Uh, but don't hold your breath. It looks like this year is, uh, as we have been suggesting for some time, a year like uh, unlike many others, in which we could actually start to see prices moving up. And here's why. Uh, oil, like it or not, uh, you know, energy investors and many of these people don't actually take physical, uh, you know, inventories. They are actually just paper uh, you know, positions uh, are uh, continuing down this road of looking for macroeconomic headlines to be negative and to be bearish. But the fundamentals, the supply and demand picture is pointing very clearly and very decisively to a significant shortage in supply, not just for oil, but also for diesel and uh, to a lesser extent gasoline. U.S. refiners have been running at about 95 percent capacity utilization. What that means is that sooner or later something is going to have to happen. Uh, maintenance, shutdown or breakdown. Uh, and that's all starting to develop. And at the same time, of course, this time of year, we uh, we we think we may have uh, avoided the bullet, uh, dodged the bullet uh, on uh, hurricanes. <clears throat> Looks like we could start to see some activity a little late this year, but nevertheless, that could disrupt the flow of some of energy. Uh, a note, of course, is not a political comment, but a little ironic and, and a little disappointing to see the Biden administration, uh, who are trying to find ways to shut down U.S. oil and, of course, you know, uh, first order of government they're taking over was to kill the Keystone XL pipeline. Now having to secretly admit that they've been uh, somewhat sanctioning Iranian oil, not that they could do anything about it, getting to China and now making willing to make some kind of deals with Venezuela. It's really too bad that Canada says nothing about uh, these kind of, uh, you know, these embarrassing, uh, you know, moves by the Biden and Democrat administration when in fact they had security and supply but decided to kill the Keystone XL pipeline. So, well, the Americans decide what they want to do with their politics. The reality is that prices are going to go up and having to go to deal with shady uh, global leaders like Iran and Venezuela to backfill the uh, energy you're going to need uh, seems to speak to the fact that uh, green energy and the uh, uh, the myth behind it and the delusions behind it that you can somehow wave a magic wand and these will replace uh, the importance of hydrocarbons. Well, that's something that Americans are starting to feel. We saw that here in, in the past 24 hours with Texas, some communities saying they're going through brownouts because they put all their eggs in one renewables basket. Canada, of course, is well down that road. We have a, a minister of environment who's now in China on a board of directors that is in part led by the communist Chinese party. Interesting that we have cabinet ministers now doing the bidding for the Chinese who are laughing, of course, and mocking their uh, our green energy targets while at the same time getting a pass, not till 2030 or 2050, but now saying maybe we'll get around to it in 2060. Uh, unfortunately, that's the story for Canadians. We all look bad as a result of it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about gasoline for next week. Uh, it looks like we're going to be seeing uh, an increase on average of about two cents a liter, pushing prices in uh, Vancouver up to about two ten a liter. Uh, the rest of the province about a buck seventy five. Uh, Alberta will probably stay in the one forty one to one forty five range, uh, while Saskatchewan uh, and Manitoba remain pretty much fixed between one fifty five and one sixty five. Saskatoon being the best place to buy gasoline, uh, as retailers are not making any money. Obviously, they're selling a lot of beef jerky and water to make up the difference. Ontario, uh, you know, you're in the 166 range. It's come down a little bit. It's going to go back up towards 170, maybe 169. And uh, same for Quebec, which is, of course, at uh, one uh, in the 178 range, could touch again at $1.80. Maritimes, they had a bit of a break this week. They had a big increase last week. So Atlantic Canada saw prices jump uh, in, in places like Newfoundland as much as six cents a litre dropped by about uh, two or three cents a litre. They're expecting, uh, and I would expect them to see a bit of a decrease in Newfoundland. As for the rest of uh, the Maritimes, Atlantic Canada, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick PEI, uh, I would expect those, uh, the five cent decrease that they got Friday uh, to actually be reversed a little bit. We could actually see a one cent increase for next week. The big story, Nima, going forward will be diesel supplies. Uh, we know that uh, like oil, uh, it's becoming more and more tight. And as a result, we're going to continue to see more and more emphasis dropping up oil prices, especially in diesel prices, especially as we head towards 
cooler weather that we're seeing in much of the eastern part of the country. And don't forget what we mentioned a few weeks ago, the Irving and uh, Philadelphia Trainer Delta refineries are going to be down for maintenance for a month. So get ready. It's going to be a quick ride, but perhaps an expensive one as we head to the first weeks of September.